Yeah, so. yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, Jay Z, Jay Z, in the NFL. How do you feel about that particular uh, him supposedly joining up with the NFL? He's been receiving a lot of backlash, and some people are on board with that. What's your thoughts on that? <laughs> 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 Listen, if you're in business with the NFL, you're there to get money, all right? Whew. And you 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 there to get money at whatever means. And I, I I'm I'm waiting for the long term strategy. You know, apparently we were past kneeling because niggas ain't kneeling no more, right? Mm. But I don't know if that's what he meant. You think that's what he meant? That's that my question. Is, I, I I'll play I'll play tennis with y'all today. <laughs> you think that's what he meant? You think that's what Jay meant when he said we passed kneeling that he wanted people to be out here? Ripping, ripping a, a furs out of Gucci, because that's what past kneeling is. When no. people are past kneeling, we're not going to be past any of this until the police get past that, right? Exactly. We yeah. get past what they're doing. Like I, I remind people, multiculturalism didn't fail in the, in America. Americans failed to be racist. White Americans failed to not be racist. And mm. when it comes to Black and Latino people being racist, um, when people say, "Oh, it's about institutional power." You know what I mean? Black people can't be racist. They're forgetting about colorism and what I explained to you before mm -hmm. and how plenty of black people are racist. I know black people that speak Spanish and they don't think they're black and they're mm. racist. You know? Come on now. Can, yeah. can a black person be racist? Absolutely. If, if they're not conscious of who they are, if they, a person can be, can be racist against themselves but they have no knowledge of self. A person can be a certain race and not represent the interest of anybody of that color as well and be used as a pawn by other people to get what they want out of it. That's a fact. See, the gay situation is different. He, he's, he's, a, he's a millionaire a hundred times over, so it's not like he, he's desperate for money. I, I, I don't know if he's trying to buy a stake in it. We don't mm -hmm. know. I, I, I haven't heard what he said about these protests going on right now. I think that he's done the smart thing and does not said nothing. Like Dave Chappelle said, he said a lot of, a lot of real smart motherfuckers, they said nothing. Because mm -hmm. niggas don't want to hear from no fucking celebrity right now. They don't want to hear that. They don't want like like. Look, dude, if, if you out here being a neoliberal shell, like like the like the Democratic mayor, right? Mm -hmm. They don't want you at the protest. If you gonna show up there with a MAGA hat and try to like start a fight with people, you a fool. You are gonna get your ass kicked, and 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 you're not brave for that. That's what I think is is sad. That I see these situations where a guy runs into a crowd of people, right? with a sword, like screaming, uh, make America great and get beat the fuck up. And <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like, think about this. How much, how much sympathy you think there would be for me if I, like, I don't know, put on like a football uniform that said Black Lives Matter and I took a three-point stance and I just charged into a fucking group of MAGA hat people and they beat me up because I, I, I charged into them. Would people have sympathy for me? No. Then why y'all got sympathy for a nut job who do who pull out a bow and arrow and shoot a kid in the middle of the street? Stay in your car, stay in your lane, keep going. You don't want these people to bother you. They don't want to bother you for nothing. The the the, the message has been very clear to all the protesters that I've seen. Don't hurt nobody. We don't give a fuck about these institutions, but we ain't trying to hurt no innocent people. Like if five the only time they wild out is when five O start tear gassing them. And I feel yeah. that because they, they, they do it on purpose. They they keep they, they put the old vehicles in front. Listen, you want me to kick G, I kick real G. They put the old vehicles in front because they're going to get an insurance money for them, right? So they let niggas burn the old vehicles. And when people charge, they allow the, the, the first group to come in. It's called kettling. It's a, it's a, it's a Vikinger tactic. They let the first uh, come in, and then they, they, they close the sides and flank people from all angles. They doing the same thing, and then they fire tear gas on people that are, are peacefully protesting because they want to incite violence. And I'll tell you yeah. why. Because right now they're trying to justify their existence, brothers. Mm. Right now, the police department is definitely and desperately trying to justify why LAPD has a Lamborghini, why all these big companies have Chargers and all these Porsche cars. Mm -hmm. LAPD has six Porsches. Why? so the grass can use them to drive from place to place. Why? That's what we mean by defund the police. Why do? Why does NYPD have two tanks? Why? Was a tank going to stay? Even if you had 10 tanks, were they going to stop the planes that hit the, the, the World Trade Center? No. Come on, yeah, man. Stop afterwards. Yeah. yeah. We, we got we to gotta remember this one, one thing, and then I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let it go. The police department and the police in general 
are part of a punitive system that we have in the United States. And what I mean by punitive is they punish people who do things wrong. Very rarely, and if they do, I can count it on my hand, have the police kicked in the door this year and stopped a woman from being raped. Mm -hmm. Very rarely do the police catch a bullet meant for someone else or stop someone right when they're about to shoot somebody. Yep. 99% of the time, they go and find people that did something wrong and punish them so badly, right? Punish them so badly that it's supposed to send us a message not to do it anymore. And when I explain that to people, they ask, well, do they think it works? And I say it hasn't worked in 300 years. It hasn't worked in 400 years. It hasn't worked since the dawn of time. That's not how you help a people. That's not how you educate a people. That's not how you lift them up. That's how you oppress a people. That's it. You know, we, we, we need peace officers. We don't need people patrolling us. Fact. One more question, man. Sure. Got to ask you about the Africa Bambada. Those, those things have been going around. It's been a few years now. Where do you stand on that? I've been hearing your name around the internet. I stand um, with the children. I stand with the victims. I have since day one. I made that 100% clear. I told all the OGs that I, I consider no man infallible. If somebody want to be upset with that, you know where the fuck I live. You know where I am. I'm not hard to find. And that's not a challenge. That's just me being honest because I've seen everybody that's involved in this thing in one way or another. And the only person I haven't seen in respect to that is Bam. And that's because he knows he don't want to be seen here. And people are upset and they genuinely hurt. And as a person who lives in Harlem, I have to hold my head up high. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a person who lives, and no disrespect to somebody who made it and lives somewhere else, and they were in Beverly Hills, but now I got to walk around Harlem while held hell high. So I had to go talk to the people who this happened to. And this, these were several people that came to me and were like, yo, Technique, our names are being dragged in the mud. They're saying that we did this, that, that, that we made this up, and I listened to them, brother. And you know what they told me? They said, we don't want him dead. Right. We want him in the book. We want him in the registry. That's his punishment. And I said, oh, wow. And that's when I realized that I wasn't dealing with liars. I was dealing with, with people that were genuinely hurt. So I, I will always stand with the victims of any abuse. And I say to people out there, it's not a hard choice to make. You know what I mean? And I get it. Somebody made a lot of contributions to it. But a person could lose their God status. Uh, no human being is infallible. Nobody is up against something. Listen, imagine if I do something great right now. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I invent the cure for cancer. But, like, I kill somebody you love's child. That don't take that away, man. You know, like, I, 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 I did something terrible. I hurt. I killed the child inside somebody. That's, that, that's not something. And, brother, I appreciate the question because... You know what? I'm never going to run from stuff like that. And I'm right. actually disappointed that a lot of other brothers didn't make their voice known when it was time. But, you know, I felt like the best place for me to have that conversation is when I went to Harlem and I did Cy Netta's channel and a bunch mm -hmm. of the other, like, specifically black media on YouTube. I was like, no, I'm going to talk to y'all. I'm not talking to Rolling Stone. You know, right. you never gave a fuck about us up here when all this was going on in the first place, right? And now you want to talk to him? Don't. I'm not talking to Fox. I have nothing to say to you. I want to talk to the black media and I want to say to the kids, don't let anything dissuade you from coming out and telling people that bad things have happened. OK, don't let nobody tell you that you're not a man for speaking up about that. Don't let nobody control your voice. Like I, 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 I taught in a prison. Right. True story. I, I went to prison and then I taught in prison with Carmen Perez. Um, and it was actually Harry Belafonte. Shout out to OG Harry Belafonte that got me that job. And he was when I went to the prison. I realized something. The, the narrative about black fathers being absent, that's bullshit. In the prison, it's not that there's an absence of black fathers. It's that most of the kids in prison don't have a mother or a father. They're mm -hmm. being raised by some offshoot member of the household or some friend of the family. And when I seen this, I realized something, that nobody respects a child when he says, you know what, man? The child has learned the wrong lesson. They believe it's the knife that has made them powerful. It's not the knife. It's the fact that they use their voice. That's what makes them powerful. Because the knife can't touch everybody. And your voice can touch everybody around the world. Your voice can reach people that are afraid to say, say what happened to them. Your voice can reach people that right now are dealing with a person who's still abusing them. So remember, 
It's not the weapon that makes you powerful. It's, it's the voice, right? It's not the gun. It's the hand and the person willing to wield. Appreciate your honesty. Appreciate you yeah. being raw on this platform, man. Something we definitely needed given this climate we got going on right now. Yeah. What's next for Moto Second Week? You out here 10 toes down on the pavement for the call and doing exactly what you're doing. We appreciate it. What you got going on next? Like I told y'all in the beginning, but I'm going to reiterate, we're doing the march. Um, and it's it's Latinos por la vida, por, por las vidas negras, which is uh, Latinos uh, standing up for black lives. And this is a movement that we're very proud to be a part of in New York. And one of the main organizers, actually an uh, Afro-Latina, a Dominican lady who is very conscious of her heritage, very conscious of her blackness. So don't let the media just portray that one side. There are a lot of uh, Afro-Latinos mm -hmm. that are not ignorant, that are not going to stand for this, that confront their racist relatives every time that do not have any of this bullshit. And I'm just grateful because... You know, I grew up with my mom always telling me, listen, your grandfather was black. Don't ever be ashamed of that. Don't ever let people talk down to you like that. Don't ever let people express themselves in a way that's disrespectful to you. Like, just remember, don't don't let people denigrate that experience because those people survive something that modern day humans could never deal with. And I always remember my, my, mom, my mom's words. So we, we're going to be at that rally showing people that Latino people are not going to fall for the okie doke. We're not going to be a pawn in your race war against black people. We're going we're gonna to find a way to unite, and we're going to work past a lot of the issues. And then I'm back in the studio working on The Middle Passage. Um, okay. I, I did a song with, um, with Killer Mike and David Banner. Okay. Ooh, called okay. Trap House. And it's about how America's a trap house run by a bunch of fucking cartels. And it's all awesome. so crazy. Um, and then I, I, had, I had a bunch of other joints on the record. Um, I did a... a I did a joint with Ali Shaheed Muhammad. He broke out uh, something from the vault for me from Tribe Called Quest. Um, so I, I just say, you know, I'm, I'm blessed. My brother Southpaw is on the boards again. So I, I'm, I'm out here just doing it. Also, we had to we had to redo a lot of the samples so we won't have to clear nothing. A lot of it sounds like a sample, but it's just replayed instruments. So that's what we're doing now. And a lot of the musicians, a lot of people that we're working with, uh, I'm very proud to say we're extremely talented people. A uh, big shout out to the sister Mumu Fresh um, from Baltimore, but she's she's out of Philly right now. Uh, she came by and she actually sang and rapped on a title track for the Middle Passage, which is a, a, another crazy story. So, don't we're, we're we're just still out here doing what we do, and hopefully we'll have this record out to you by 9/11, which is where what what what, what we're what we're targeting for. But you know what I mean? That's what we do, brother. We we, we make the moves, man. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, More technique in the building. Go ahead and drop your handles where people can find you, social media and all that, if you may, please. What's up, man? It's Immortal Technique. And right now you're watching the Hip Hop Uncensored podcast. Um, you can catch me on IG at Tech Immortal and on Twitter at Immortal Tech. So I love y'all. Appreciate you. And uh, ViperRecords.com is the handle if you want to get the merchandise. Um, if you want to burn the shit off the internet for free, go ahead. I don't give a fuck. Just burn it for someone you love. If you want to support us, buy a t-shirt, buy a CD, get a physical product, and we'll sign it for you if you ask. Love y'all. Appreciate you. And most of all, remember, stay alive.